Hello, my friends. Good morning. Tuesday, 14th of July. Nice to be here. It's Keith from IELTS Speaking Success. Hello and welcome. Today, we're going to be looking at the exciting topic of helping others, volunteering and things like that. We'll be looking at uh, the whole topic, vocabulary, language, some different questions we may ask and answer on this topic. Um, and, well, we'll see. We'll find out how we go. <laughs> Good to see you here. Good morning. A few quick hellos to all of you. Um, Abhilasha first in the house. Saurab, Sanveen, Gulsafa, Raj, Niraj. Good morning, guys. Nice to see you. Emily, I think from Taiwan, right? Nice to see you. JT, Dalvi, um, Priti, hello, and Rejwana, Siju, Gubrit, Mohammed, Soki, Bose, nice name, love it. Brilliant. Nice to see you all. Welcome to today's session. It's actually a gorgeous day, right? Not just a nice day. Nice is kind of very an overused British <laughs> English word. It's nice. It's nice. Yes, it's a nice day. But today it's a gorgeous day, right? Absolutely beautiful. The sun is shining. Um, there are no clouds, although there are one or two wispy clouds in the sky. And it looks really nice. Where I live, there's a cool sea breeze coming in, which makes it kind of fresh. Not too hot, not too cold. <laughs> Great. Hi, Joy from Abu Dhabi. Nice to see you again and here. Good morning, Goldie Sharma. Good morning. And from Facebook, we've got um, unknown people. <laughs> How can you all be called unknown? What's happened to the avatars in Facebook? That is strange. Oh, I know why. Because <laughs> Facebook's disappeared. Right. Fortunately, um, you can still access me on the Facebook group. Right. Keith's IELTS community. So, if you're not there, come and join us. Um, the Facebook page has disappeared, as you know, I think. But the face, face, Facebook <laughs> sounds like Sean Connery. The Facebook page, the Facebook page has disappeared, unfortunately. Oh dear, oh dear. But the group is still here. So most people today, if you're on Facebook, I don't know your name because it comes up here as unknown. <laughs> I do know you, but you're unknown. So I will only be able to say hello to the uh, the, the YouTube gang. Right, good. Um, so this session is going to be lovely as well, Shelley. I hope so too, indeed. I'm in very positive spirits. Just to let you know, right, thank you very, very, very much for all of your support and beautiful comments that you've given. Um, it's going to take a few weeks to work out what is happening with uh, my issues around the British Council, um, but we will see what happens. In the meantime, we're still doing the live classes. The website is still up. Um, there was a change for a day or two, but everything's back to normal. Um, and the YouTube is still up and the Facebook group is still up. So if you want to join the Facebook group, please do come along. Um, it's just called, it's just called I'll show you what it's called. This will be the easy way to show you. Bear with me. It's called this. Keith's <clears throat> IELTS Mastermind Community. Find it on Facebook and you can come and join us there. Okay. Right. So what's happening today? What are we going to do today? This is what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about helping people, about volunteering, about charity, about how we help, why we help, all these kind of questions, right? Which I think will be really, really useful and exciting for us. Okay, now then, let me just pull in my things. <laughs> okay, where do we start? We start with some essential vocabulary, right? When we talk about helping, there are probably some very, very you know, basic words that we should know. So I'm going to share these with you first of all, right? Let's just have a quick look here at some essential vocabulary. You can go over here, my friend. System audio is down. Why is the system audio down? 
Okay, let me just check that you can all hear me. I'm assuming you can all hear me. Just give me a quick hello or a quick yes, thumbs up to confirm that you can hear me. Quick thumbs up. Can you hear me? Okay, Rachel says yes. Susan, yes. Okay, I've got a system problem here, but if you can hear me, that's good. Thank you very much. Excellent. That's what matters most. So helping, right? To help. So we talk about to help someone out, right? So we can say, I like to help people or I like to help people out. So the use of out is really nice. Um, so we can say, I like to help people out. Why is it nice? Well, because it's natural English. It's a phrasal verb, right? Help out. It doesn't mean you're taking them outside. It just means you're helping them, right? So it's a nice way to express it. Another couple of nice expressions is to give a hand or to lend a hand, right? Very often when you're helping people, you say, oh, let, let me just help you carry your bags. And, you know, if you're almost giving your hand to help carry the bag um, or if the teacher's carrying the books, let me just give you a hand. You're literally giving your hands so they can do their thing, their thing, their work, their job. So to give a hand, not give my hand. No, 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 no. Not give your hand. No. A hand. Give a hand, right? Lend a hand. And what happens, you'll notice as I say it, lend a hand. Lender. So this connecting, lender, lender, the a becomes a and lend a hand. Giver, giver, give a hand. Just try it with me, right? First of all, just repeat with me. Lender. I lend a. I lend a hand. I like to lend a hand. One more time. I like to lend a hand. Good. Let's just do the same with giver. Giver. Give a hand. I give a hand. I wanted to give a hand. That was hard. I wanted to give a hand. I wanted to give a hand. Hooray! Brilliant. That's it. To give a hand. Nice. Good. Let me give you a hand. Lovely. Let me give you a hand. Emmy likes to help old people out. Good for you, Emmy. I think that's really, really good. Um, Praviti, is it okay to use you in general? Yes, it is. Yes. We use you a lot to refer to the people, not just you, right? Um, but you generally for people. Absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. Good. <laughs> Some interesting uh, comments there. Right. Okay. Allow me to give you a hand. Yes. Good. To help someone help some out. Brilliant. Jane Melody, welcome back. Nice to see you too. So we can, as well as saying to lend a hand, we can say to lend a helping hand or to give a helping hand, right? Because literally <laughs> it is a helping hand. Let me give a, let me lend a helping hand. I like to lend a helping hand. I love to lend a helping hand. I often lend a helping hand. Guys, do you remember last week we looked at the juggling with the balls? I haven't got my balls, excuse me. I haven't got any lemons to juggle today. But last week we looked at juggling where you learn a new word. And what do you do? Immediately you start using it in simple phrases, in the present, in the past, the present perfect, right? I often lend a helping hand. I've often lent a helping hand. 
Last week, there was a, a woman struggling with her bags coming out of the supermarket. I lent a helping hand. Right? Brilliant. So this is what we need to be doing, right? As soon as we learn a new expression, use it. You can type it, yeah? Or you can speak it better just to speak out a cup, two or three phrases using it. Brilliant. Hooray. I give a hand. <laughs> 101. Give my give me a hand to learn English. You want me to give you a hand to learn English? I am lending you a helping hand to learn English. <laughs> Brilliant. Nice. Some good phrases there, guys. Very, very good. <laughs> Lend a hand in learning English. Yes, you can. Yes. So lending a hand doesn't have to be physical with the hands. Actually, it can be abstract. Great question. Yeah, nice. Very, very good. And to pitch in, right, to pitch in is to, hmm, is to what? So to pitch in, right, in has that feeling of, going in, joining in, participating. So to pitch in is to participate, to jump in or to go in and help. So we use this um, very much when there's a task to do, right? Imagine there's a group of people and we all have to dig a hole. Come on, pitch in and help. Join in, right? It's similar to join in. So join in and help. So we often say that. I like to pitch in at help, right? At, at, phew, pitch in and help. In At work, I like to pitch in at, and help. <laughs> um, when else? When we, Whenever we go round to somebody's house, if they're doing a dinner party, I, because I like cooking, I like to go to the kitchen and pitch in and help, right? Pitch in and help. Brilliant. Pitch in the discussion, smiling gem. Yes, pitch in the discussion. Absolutely. Can we pitch in and help COVID patients with some groceries? Yes. Let's just put that up because I think that's a nice one. Yes, we can. We can pitch in and help COVID patients with some groceries. Very, very nice. Good. Yep. Excellent. A good few examples there. Last week, I saw my old neighbor struggling to lift her suitcases to her house. So I offered her a helping hand. Very, very nice. That's great. <laughs> great. Nice. And here we've got Nikhil is doing a bit of juggling. I always like to pitch in and help. Pitch in, remember, chin, pitch in, because you're linking. Pitch in and help. Pitch in and help. Somebody from Korea. My mum always calls me when you do a class. Tell your mum to join the class. <laughs> Father, you love to pitch in and help. I do like to pitch in and help. <laughs> vra, 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 jesh. I pitch in myself in NGO during this uh, pandemic. Right. Um, right, but don't, it's not reflexive. So you can't pitch in yourself. So all you do... Um, I pitch in in my I pitch in, in myself. I pitch in for a, I would say this. I pitch in I pitch in for a NGO for an NGO. Sorry, it's a n n an, an NGO. If it's the acronym it has to be an, right? I pitch in for oh I've got rid of your in. Come on, Keith. <laughs> Pull your socks up. That's me. I pitch in for an NGO during this pandemic. Pandemic. Okay. Nice. Excellent. So, very good. Let me just come back then for a moment. Bring in my notes again. Um, actually, don't bring in my notes. Bring me in. <laughs> bring me in. Let's see. So, I'm going to look at, um, very briefly, a Part two question. Um, we're around volunteering, right? 
And so I'd like to look at a few things around this part two question. So here we go. Part two, getting ideas, the one minute preparation and talking. So a lot of students ask, um, how do I get ideas in part two? Well, the thing is, right, is if you're familiar with the questions, obviously that helps because you can prepare ideas before the test, um, which is good. If you're in the test and it's an unfamiliar question, or the first time you've seen it, um, then really, I think you should just get one idea. Don't brainstorm lots of ideas thinking, oh, maybe that, maybe this. What about this? Don't do that because your one minute will finish just like that, right? In the click of a finger, your one minute will finish. So try and get the first idea. It may not be perfect. It may not be the best, but if you can do it, get your first idea. If it's a true, real situation or a real idea, it's even better. But if you can't, if you think, well, I've never, I've never volunteered, right? Let's take this question at the bottom, right? The question, describe an experience when you volunteered to do something. And you're thinking, well, I've never volunteered. Then make it up. Invent something. Make up a story, right? Um, but just think it very, very quickly. If you've got a true example, that's better, right? So that's about getting ideas. Get your first idea really, really quickly. And then spend the rest, uh, the remaining 40 seconds with your preparation. And I suggest the one minute preparation, right, is to get or to make three blocks to talk about. A block, I mean topic, maybe. So maybe you talk about what it was, for example, um, why you did it and how you feel about it, right? Maybe. Why is everything underlined? I don't know. <laughs> so those might be your three blocks. One, two, stop underlining. Thank you. Three. Might be that. Now you'll notice this might be the same as the bullet points. And if you think the bullet points are good, use the bullet points. If you don't like the bullet points, you can make different ones, right? It doesn't matter about the bullet points. The main thing is the question. The main thing is that top question, which was describe an experience when you volunteered to do something. That's the most important thing. But then you want to get your three blocks, your three topics that you're going to talk about. Um, and in the last five seconds, have your first sentence ready. So when the examiner says, can you start talking now, please? You straight away have got your first sentence ready and you go confidently straight in with your first sentence. I'm going to tell you about a time I volunteered for my local charity, Save the Cat or something like that. But you've got your first sentence because A, it makes a good impression. B, it gives you confidence. And C, there is no C. There's just A and B, right? Good impression, good confidence. It will just help you. So many candidates, really, they at the very start, um, they have not even thought of the question and they start mumbling, oh, I think I am, um, or, um, and, and, and all the hesitation comes. So get your first, get your first sentence, right? Your first sentence ready. Okay, that's not how you spell ready, I know. It's just I can't see 
because too many things on my screen. Get your first sentence ready and then start talking, right? Okay, so let's have a look at some ideas. Let's come down to this one because this is quite tricky, right? Describe an experience when you volunteered to do something. There are different kinds of volunteering, just to be clear. So formal volunteering, right, when you go to an organisation and volunteer, so that means to help out for free, it's non-paid, right? So volunteer means you choose to do it, to help, you choose to help, and it's for free, it's not paid. There are many different kinds, right? You can teach abroad. A lot of um, Chinese students teach Chinese abroad. A lot of American and British students teach English abroad. This often for free, and this is volunteering. Looking after the elderly, right? Maybe in your community is uh, volunteering. There's child care, wildlife conservation, right? Trying to work with organizations. I remember a time when I lived in Malaysia and uh, I came across an organization um, that was trying to protect the, in particular, the tiger, but also the orangutan and some different um, animals in Borneo. And they had set up a lot of volunteering opportunities for young people to go and pitch in and help out with wildlife conservation. So that's quite common in certain countries. Maybe it's just community development. Um, somebody mentioned before uh, helping out with COVID, especially, right? Now in many communities, um, food for, well, for, I was, I was going to say poor people. Um, food for poor people or food for, for people at risk um you could say below the poverty line and this depends on every country but you know even in uh so-called developed countries like england we have people at risk below the poverty line and who need um food to help them out actually not just in covid but in other times of the year but with covid particularly there are food banks so working you know working with the we call them the food banks um helping with the food banks for the people who have maybe lost their job and gosh there are so many right and who cannot um provide for themselves Another kind of volunteering is festival volunteers. Now, this is a bit of a fad. Uh, a bit of a fad is a, a fad is a fashion, right? A fad. It's a bit of a fashion in England in particular because we have a lot of cultural festivals, music festivals, where people go to Reading and Glastonbury, to these big pop festivals, and volunteer. They volunteer to help out, set up, the equipment, um, maybe help out with food or different things. And they do it because, oh, but that's jumping ahead. We're going to look at why in a moment. <laughs> and fun fairs, it's the same thing. People help out at fun fairs. So there's formal volunteering, right? But there's also informal now, what do I mean by informal? Well, exactly that, where you don't go to an organisation, but just in your everyday life, um, you volunteer. So, for example, your mum or your dad says, OK, OK, because they're from Sheffield. OK, did you know that? Your mum and dad are from Sheffield. And they say, OK, whose turn is it today to help do the washing? Who's going to help the washing? So who's going to wash the pots or wash the clothes? And, you know, maybe your mum or dad from Sheffield ask for a volunteer from your brothers and sisters to, to help in the at, at home. Maybe your teacher, if you're at university uh, or school even, if you're at school, would you be doing IELTS? Probably not. But actually, 
actually even your headmaster if you're a teacher i'm sure your headmaster asks for vol volunteers right who's going to help and you know volunteer hmm <laughs> volunteer means you choose to help but sometimes the headmaster says it in such a way that you you can't say no right right keith i'd like you to to help out today are you happy to do that okay i'll volunteer volunteer so maybe cleaning the classroom if you're a student or helping out at school if the school is running an activity you volunteer to help out if you've got children right and your school the children's school is running activities often the parents volunteer to help out if there's a fair or a show you maybe you help out there or at work if you're working then usually there's some kind of activity or project where the bosses will ask you can somebody help lead this project right even in your team right we need somebody to lead the project who would like to help it's a great learning opportunity to develop your skill set to grow your confidence to develop your professional skill set did i say that already who would like to volunteer and so you can volunteer at work as well okay so there are different kinds of volunteering good let me find out what you guys are writing just for a moment while i have a a cup of a cup of joe right i've never heard that before but a student was asking me the other day can we say a cup of joe for a cup of coffee and i my conclusion was it was an american saying a cup of joe i've never heard that my, I noticed some Australian people have never heard that. And I guess the issue was it's, it's kind of slang, a cup of joe, and it's used in certain countries and not other countries. So I wouldn't use slang in IELTS because there's a danger. If you're examiners from England and they don't know the expression, the slang, it may not help you. But actually, this is not coffee. This is tea right let's see what you're writing mm. as, as i'm seeing what you're writing let's share a few of these because i think they're very good of examples to give you ideas right elisa you're not elisa sorry i'm late too <laughs> why are you all late don't come in late here we go oh. Elisa, this was a good one. Let me get rid of me. The W. Oh, this is interesting. The WW, the WOOF. What a great acronym. The WOOF. That's what dogs do. The WOOF organization. Joking aside, the Worldwide Opportunity in Organic Farms. It's a great chance to lend a hand at the same time to meet different countries, cultures, and learning about organic crap crops good great can we ashraf yes you can repeat the words two times ah no you know i thought i should cover all of the bullet points no you don't have to there's nothing in the evaluation about you must cover all the bullet points right not at all no you do not have to cover all the bullet points Great. Good. What else are people saying? Street children, says Trisha. That's right. I always give my helping. Oh, remember, sorry. That's a really good point, Trisha. Very, very good point. Not my helping hand. I know you feel like it's your hand, but it's not. It's a helping hand. I always give a helping hand to those street children. Trisha, very nice. Great. And good for you. Yeah, so Una, you're right. So to volunteer to help out for free. Working for the dole. Well, Jane, the working for the dole, if it's free and you choose to do it, then yes, that's could be volunteering. Right? I assume you meet you mean helping people who are on the dole, right? I think that's if if that's what you mean, yes. Um if you're helping people who are on the dole on the dole by the way means 
without a job. Yes. Some interesting ideas here. Install clean pipes in poor areas. Yeah. Here's a nice one. Babysitting. Right. So long as you're not paid, Raghav. Many, in many countries, people do get paid for that. Um, yeah. Free medical services. And of course, you know, that brings us to the charities, right? Lots of charities um, do provide services uh, as such. And we're going to talk about charities in a moment. Right. Good ideas, which reminds me. Move on, Keith. <laughs> okay. So describe... Uh, Yes, I'm going to give you an example. Okay. So here's the question. Hang on. Let me bring it up. Describe an experience when you volunteered to do something. Okay. So I'm going to tell you about a time when my project, my project, let me start again. I'm going to tell you about a time when my boss asked me um, to volunteer to lead a creativity project. Now, this is going back quite a few years when I was working in blah, blah country. Um, and I had been there for a couple of years. Um, I was working um, as a, a manager, as a project manager. And one day we had a meeting. And in the meeting, um, my boss revealed to us that they were creating a new group within the organization to get creative ideas and to brainstorm create, creative ideas so they could bring creativity into the workplace. And my boss was asking everybody um, who would like to volunteer. Now, I thought this would be a great opportunity to develop my professional skills, um, to meet different people from the organisation and to pitch in and get involved in a really exciting project. It really resonated with me, the idea of creativity in the workplace. So I put up my hand and I, volunte I volunteered <laughs> to help out, you know, and to give a, give a, give a helping hand. I thought it would be a great opportunity. And so I did. I joined the team. We were made up of um, different people from different departments. And we had to look at creative ways of um, doing things in the workplace. It was a really um, exciting experience. I really enjoyed it. I got a lot out of it. Um, I did build new relationships and also um, develop some quite interesting um, skills as well as boost my own kind of self-confidence in the workplace. And that was a really nice experience. Nice experience. Nice. <laughs> That's it, right? That's my, my answer. Now, just going back then, right, let me go back and show you what I thought about so i i did think about this a little bit for a minute before the class <laughs> let's take helping away um and this is what i actually wrote down so i had a minute to think about it so i what i wrote down was this so the question was describe an experience when you volunteered to do something. So I had very quickly my idea was about the time my boss asked me to participate in a, pro in a project. It was a creativity project or something similar. Um, it had a special name, but I chose this word because it's understandable. And then I got my three blocks, right? My three things. So I talked about the background, right? I was living in blah blah country at the time I was working as a project manager right so that kind of background I was living in da 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 at the time or I was working as a da 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 at the time um, I used that lovely trick right I had moved there some years earlier now, it's not a trick, but it, it really is nice because you can use the past perfect, right? A past before this past moment, right? So I was living there, but I had moved there 
some years earlier. So look at the tenses, look at the variety in tenses I'm able to use when I'm talking about the background. Um, and I explain, you know, my boss was looking for, whoops, not here, here. My boss was looking for, um, and I put my hand up. Yeah, so we've got the continuous, past continuous, simple past. I put my hand up. I decided to pitch in and all of that in the background. So that was a very, uh, I think, a good block, especially talking about a past experience. I talked about why I decided to say why I did this. And I talked about what happened. Right. Why I felt it would. Again, great grammar even if I say so myself, I felt it would help me build, you know, professional skills. I felt it would help me. I mean, that's great, right? Um, it was a good, it was a good opportunity to, 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 to build confidence maybe, right? And then I talked about uh, what what happened at the end, basically. What happened, so I joined, it was great. And that's gonna be really simple past. I joined, I pitched in, um, I, I, I enjoyed it as well. I learned a lot, patatin patatan, and so on and so on. Great, so that's it, just to give you a kind of an idea of what of how I would approach um, a part two question like that. Okay, excellent. Wow, you've got some great ideas still coming in. Gosh, if <laughs> you will never be stuck on for ideas because they're all in the chat box. Brilliant. Mohammed, great. So let's just for a moment let me just share a few of these because i think these are really good ideas blood donation yes absolutely yes haddy helping disabled people yes absolutely um in the companies this is so true yes pranjali yes i used to volunteer for the csr so many companies this was true in malaysia as well where i worked the corporate social responsibility committee often want people to volunteer yeah um, this is good, Janet. I'm volunteering the flood affected people, right? Very nice adjective. The flood affected people. Very, very nice. Um, well, this is okay. This is a very good question from Diksha. Sending food to the NGOs is an example of volunteering. Um, hmm. Not really, right? This is donation. So, you're donating money or food. That's donation. Volunteering really is when you give your time. You have to give your time to help out. So I don't think that's volunteering. No, I think that's donating, right? Yeah. Um, so blood donation, we've said yes, absolutely. Right. <laughs> you're talking about my cup of joe. Uh, yeah, now here's a nice one from Amit, right? Sorry, I'm in your way. I worked as a volunteer in my college life where um, I gave assistance to my friend to perform on stage and they did their best with my cooperation and I got a certificate for volunteering a play. Yes, I gave assistance. Yes, I helped out. Gave assistance is quite quite formal, Amit. I gave assistance. I mean, the doctors give assistance when you're sick. It's quite formal. I would say I helped out. I think it's better. Okay. Great. Um, okay. Good. So, listen, let's... Um, why, why does time go so fast? I don't understand how sometimes time is slow and sometimes time is fast. I think it's riddle time. <laughs> Time for a little riddle, just as we are um, warming up. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Right, great. I'm just reading your comments. They're absolutely fascinating. Quite a few of you have volunteered in the corona pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, I'm very well today. So riddle time. Ah, uh, great. Right, okay. So here's the riddle, right? If you're ready for this, and if you're not tough, it's riddle time. This one is really difficult, right? It's really difficult. So I'm going to catch you out now. Okay, riddle time. Listen carefully. What is greater than God, more evil than the devil, the poor have it, the rich need it, and if you eat it, you'll die. Bum, 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 bum. Great. I'll read it one more time, okay? <laughs> what is greater than God, more evil than the devil? The poor have it, the rich need it, and if you eat it, you'll die. Wow, I'm actually going to write this out for you to make it easier. But this one is quite a tough one, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's meant to be difficult. Where is it? Here we are, down here. What is greater than God, more evil than the devil? The poor have it, the rich need it. And if you eat it, you'll die. Time? No. Peace? No. Diamond? No. Time? No. Patience, no. Money, no. Spirit, no. Poison, no. Oh, now you're getting the answer. Now you've got the answer. Yeah, yeah, well done. Marriage, marriage. Ooh, but if you eat marriage, you'll die. Ooh. <laughs> if you eat your wife, you'll die. Maybe. Um, God, peace. No, you've but some of you have got the answer. Quite a few of you have got it. And let me put one of you up here. Here's the answer. Nothing. Dun, 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 dun. Nothing, right? What is greater than God? Nothing. More evil than the devil? Nothing. The poor have it? Nothing. The rich need it? I don't need anything. I need nothing if you're rich. And if you eat it, you'll die. If you eat nothing you'll die oh well done quite a few of you got that very very well done some very very good answers but you did it i'm trying to find who got the answer first who was the first one to say nothing <laughs> it's gone now it's so hard to track your comments seriously Never mind. You know who you are. You know who got the first answer. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Good. So the answer was nothing. That's it. That's the riddle. Da -dun -da -dun -dun -dun. Now, moving on. Let's cover that up. Let's come over. Let's ask you a question. Let's me. Let's ask. Let me ask you <laughs> a question. I'm going to look at a few different questions. Right? Why do some people? volunteer okay there's my first question for you why do some people volunteer I said we're going to talk about why so why do some people volunteer write it down in the uh, write down in the box below just tell me what you think why do some people volunteer write down your answers below <laughs> And I'm going to start putting your answers up straight away because we've got some brilliant answers up here. Right, Saeed. 
Saida. They find solace in it. Solace is like comfort, right? Great. Priya, it gives the sense of satisfaction. That's nice, right? Gopina also talks about satisfaction, right? The satisfaction of contributing. Okay. For young people, particularly, as Ola says, to gain experience, yes. Um, because they want to help, nice. Twinks, good. For humanity purposes, very nice. Right, this is just an interesting anecdote from Hadi. Having volunteered, I can say the most beautiful job that someone can do is being a volunteer, right? Good, well, nice. Trin says it brings them peace, right? Satisfaction, peace. Sounds like a Beatles song or a Rolling Stones song. Satisfaction, peace, contribution, experience, right? Um, because they have good souls, maybe. Nice, absolutely. Here's an interesting one from Max. Because they have sympathy with people in need, right? Nice. Sympathy, just make sure we get the right preposition there well done max have sympathy with people in need yeah, absolutely uh because they are generous right great so lots of different ideas there excellent good let me just put up a few up here um these are a bit small aren't they riddle we've done the riddle da -da. out we go let me make this a little bit bigger and I'll just add these to what you've already said, basically. Um, okay, so let's put what you said first. So we get to gain experience was a nice one. So as well as get, gain experience. Um, get a sense of satisfaction. That was great. They find solace in it which is a bit like peace, right? Um, so, and then give something back to the community. So the idea of giving back is a great phrasal verb, right? But to give back to the community, especially the older you are, the more you have benefited from the community and you want to give back to the community. The nice expression below, make a difference in people's lives. Because when you help out during the pandemic or during or helping the flood affected people in Bangladesh, you can make a difference in people's lives. You can really help them. So notice the collocation. Make a difference in people's lives. So remember, when you're learning these, just make two or three phrases. I make a difference. I like to make a difference. Last month, I volunteered and I made a difference, right? Just remember to juggle your your language as you're learning it. Very nice. Um, develop new skills, maybe. We talked about developing skills. Or build self-confidence. You can build self-confidence. You can build self-esteem. That's belief in yourself and well-being, right? Often you feel good when you volunteer and help out. Maybe it provides a sense of purpose. Somebody talked about a sense of purpose, a feeling of doing something meaningful to provide a sense of purpose, right? So very nice collocation. Again, a sense of purpose. So here, really focus on the collocations. Brilliant. Some very, very nice answers there. Very, very nice. Okay. Excellent. <clears throat> Love it. So, nice. Let me come back. So some lovely ideas there. So that's, we talked about why people may want to, to help. Um, let's talk a little bit about this question because this question um, does come up sometimes in this topic of helping out about charities right um i'm going to ask you all this question where are we here we are 
I just need to make it the right size so you can read it. And this one about charities is this question, okay? So what role do charities play in your country? Charities, by the way, just to be clear, because I'm not sure if you all know about charities. Um, what are charities? Charities are things like this. <laughs> things like what, Keith? Things like this. Oh, come on, this one. Let's get rid of you. Let's get rid of me. So charities. Um, earlier, somebody somebody mentioned the WOOF, the W-W-O-O-F. Um, but also we've got the WWF, the World Wildlife Fund, Amnesty, UNICEF, right, who look after children, Bra the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, Oxfam as well is another. These are all charities, right? So they're organisations, non-government organisations that help people out. Okay. Um, so the question for you, what role do charities play in your country? Let me know. And let's start sharing. Choco, charities play a pivotal role in Vietnam. Great, nice, good. Uh, they want to make a better world, right? What role do charities play? So tell us more. So that's maybe why, but what, what do they actually do? What do they actually do? So they help out others, good. So you want now to go into more detail. How do they help out others? Okay, they bring help to the poor, good. How do they bring help to the, the poor? So now we're getting closer. Charities like money, volunteer, and help to the poor as possible. So they bring money and volunteers. That's how they do it. So again, give us more details. What exactly do they do? Okay, good. We've got an example. So you would want in a question like this then to give a specific example. In my country, the Red Cross, and then... Um, go on to give an example in my country the red cross helps poor people by taking donations and buying medicine so they can help people who otherwise cannot afford to pay for medicine something like that so you're taking a very specific example the red cross you're saying what they do how they do it and you're digging deeper and deeper right because this is you know typically a part three question you want to go into more detail right so you're giving me some good ideas here they're very general but of course in the test you'd go more specific right yeah so great you've got some very good ideas institution that help people Okay, and now we've got a nice one here. Um, Oxan says, in my country, charities play a crucial role in attracting people's attention and considering the rights of people around us who are disabled or animals which are on the verge of extinction, he says down here, extinction. That's nice, right? Some very, very nice uh, language there. And he's going into quite a bit of detail fantastic so here they provide the funding at the right place that's nice right giving the right money at the right place to help the right people again and you would go on to give a bit more detail <clears throat> yes this is good as well twink speed up the process of helping others in need helen says they protect endangered species that would be interesting to know, Helen. In your country, which which species do they protect? How do they protect them? Um, and so you can go on to give a, a lot more detail for this kind of question. Okay, fantastic. Brilliant. Very, very nice. I will share with you a couple of ideas. Um, so 
what role do charities play? Well, just a few words that might come up here. That, as we said, they raise funds, right? Um, put money in the right place to reach the right people, as as you said, somebody said earlier. So funds, just to be clear, is money. Normally donations, right? We talk about donations, which is money you give for free, obviously. Um, put money in the right place to the right people. Uh, we can talk about donating as a verb, donations as a noun. And the person, in case you need it, is a donor. So a donor is not only when you donate blood, but when you donate money, you're also a donor. Uh, you make contributions. So they, they, the actual, the charities collect contributions. Charities collect contributions um, and then distribute the money to, to help others. To help others out, let's say. Philanthropy is a nice word you may use here. Philanthropy, what a great word. It sounds like honey. Philanthropy. <laughs> Philanthropy, great word. Philanthropy is, for example, when Mark Zuckerberg gives millions of pounds to help poor people or where Bill Gates gives billions of pounds if not millions millions of pounds for the bill gates foundation to help with the uh his big thing was about mosquitoes right he donated a lot of money to fight malaria in africa so when people give money uh this is philanthropy so it's to it's it's a noun and it's to help people basically uh usually giving money usually right that's philanthropy nice word okay so gosh we've been through quite a few questions and uh those of you who've got good eyesight will see it's time for the kahoot as we come towards the end of our session today um we're gonna do a very quick review on kahoot but let's just see what you're all writing because you've got some fantastic ideas yeah okay let me just share a few more just as we finish up charities play many pivotal roles in my country such as children old age drug drug addiction people yeah drug addicts yes <laughs> yeah good and alina has got a nice one here help the development of people in the country overall they do i mean the charities like work try to work hand in hand with the government to solve not even to solve but to help with the problems that just one organization maybe can't completely help like drug addiction like homelessness um, like abuse like maybe child trafficking all sorts of things um, medical relief yep yeah, good his orphans, orphan people by giving shelter and food. Yes, orphaned people. So orphan is the noun and orphaned would be your adjective there. Yeah, orphaned people. Great. Being human. Yeah, great. Okay, great. So let's move on. Um, mm. Oh, that's nice. Taren, non-profits. So we call them NGOs or non-profits. Provide those who are struggling to make ends meet. <laughs> nice one, Taran. Struggling means finding it difficult. To make ends meet means to have enough money with basic needs, especially those who have lost their jobs, especially in the time of the coronavirus, right? Absolutely. Excellent. Nice. Okay, because of time... Because of time, I'm going to move on to the Kahoot and we're going to have a look there. 
a model you need model answers let me give you a model answer then for that last question right i'll give you a very quick model answer before we do the kahoot what role do charities play in your country well in england there's actually a wide variety of different charities um, and they all play different roles helping different sectors of the society um, one in particular that's quite well known um, is called the big issue um, and the big issue is an organization that was set up many years ago to help the homeless people um, homelessness is um, a big problem in the uk and people without shelter and without food um, falling below the poverty line and so this organization set about to try and help them in a myriad of ways and one of the really interesting ways that they help them is that they have a magazine that different people can contribute to including the homeless people they can write articles and things and then they sell the magazine on the street um, so these, the idea is that the, the rather than the homeless begging for money, is that they sell a product which helps build their self-esteem, builds their confidence, and also gives a bit of revenue to help them get themselves back on their feet, to get back on their feet. So this charity, The Big Issue, plays a pivotal role in supporting homelessness, where people have fallen through the cracks or fallen through the gaps in the government policy to help them this charity um, picks up the slack where maybe the government hasn't been able to that was quite long but hopefully there's a bit of language you can find in there um, <laughs> your part three answer wouldn't normally be that long right not normally okay um, I'll just give you a couple of the words that I said right um, get back on your feet so that's to help the homeless right the homeless people or the homeless we would just talk about the homeless right to help them get back on their feet um, and the charity uh, was set up to do something and it fills it helps people who have fallen through the cracks in the government system because obviously the government has a system right the government has a system to help people who are homeless but it doesn't always help and some people fall through the cracks right and they need help um, and so this what it does it gives them the chance to get back on their feet uh, and help them build their self-esteem right their self-confidence if you like confidence great okay there you have it my friend that's your model answer with a few bits and pieces there may be more but you'll have to go back and listen go back and rewind later and watch it brilliant Rimper, you've missed the riddle, my friend, but you're in time for the Kahoot. Yes, let's do a quick Kahoot before we finish up, which is a great way, actually, for us just to, um, to what? To review some of the language that we've been looking at. I, I'm afraid we're going to have to carry on for a few more minutes. Those of you who need to leave, you can leave, of course, but those of you who can stay, We've got another five minutes with a quick kahoot. Let's find out who is going to be on the leaderboard. Not that that's important, right? <laughs> no. OK, here we go. So for those of you who are new, kahoot is a game that we play together. Um, you can participate in this game and I'll show you how. So here is the uh, the website um, it's kahoot so we're going to play the classic game okay so what you'll need to do is join at i need to turn down the volume so
So what you need to do, as you can see, is go to www.carhoot.it and write the number 877-003, okay? If you can get into Kahoot, then that's great. If you cannot, you can type your answers in the comment box, okay? Um, so this is just a fun game, right? We're going to play. We've got a few questions to revise. <laughs> Somebody on Facebook wants my sky blue shirt. <laughs> Uh, maybe I can donate it to you. Um, so you, all these people are joining. We've got 72 players. So remember, www.carhoot.it. Put it in your browser. Enter the number. You can enter your name. We've got Bruce, Mahina, Aisha, Blue Sky, Prakesh, Sira, Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson's on the game. Boris, welcome. We're delighted to have you here. <laughs> Be interesting to see if he wins, right? Every, everybody on best behaviour. The Prime Minister is, is joined us. Right, here we go. Kahoot. Let's start the game. Okay, I think we've got... Oh, Feline's here. Great, well done. Let's start. You've got 20 or 30 seconds to answer each question. And you have to choose Theresa May. We'll have the whole cabinet here. All our ex-Prime Ministers have joined us. Yeah, no pressure. Um, you have to choose between four choices, right? It's it's multiple choice. Okay, let's start. Come on. Okay, helping and volunteering. Help! I need somebody. Ooh, not when helping. We can say I help. I help what? I help in. I help on. I help up or I help out. What do you think? You've got 16 seconds left. It's a time thing. Come on. You're against the clock. If you can't join, just put your answer. Yeah, put your answer in the comment. Five, four, three, two, one. The answer is, of course, help out. 78 people got. That's not bad not great but it's not bad okay <laughs> well done all of you well done the scoreboard so this is who got the right answer i'll get out of your way who got the right answer the quickest now look at that theresa may was in fifth place that's interesting she was faster than boris johnson uh siju you're at the top of the board let's go to question number two I help others because I can mm, a difference. Oh, let's just get out of the way. I can build, do, make or develop. Ooh, 16 seconds. Lots of makes in the comment box. But are they right? Of course, it's make. Excellent. Well done. Make is the correct answer. 101 people managed to get make. And I think everybody in the comment box as well. That's reassuring. Excellent. Let's check out our leaderboard. Oh, look at that. Emmy, you are top of the pops. Emmy, fastest and both right. Aisha, well done. KK, well done. Oh, now then. Theresa May is ahead of Boris Johnson. History is taking a strange turn. She must be very, very happy today. Maybe I'll get more politicians on my live class in future. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Question number three. And the last question. Which is the odd one out? Kind? Generous, self-esteem, unselfish. Now, this one's not so easy. So which one is different? Three seconds. 
Oh, this one was a bit more challenging, right? So this one, the actual answer was um, self-esteem, right? Because kind also is the same as generous, which is the same as unselfish, right? That you're giving, kind, generous, unselfish, all have the same meaning. Self-esteem means self-confidence. Um, so that's different, different meaning in this case. Okay, that's it. Let's just check. Ooh, who's going to win? Who do you think it will be? Teresa, Boris, Emmy? Let's find out. Third place, Aisha. Well done. Samira. Gopi came out of the blue, out of nowhere. Well done. <laughs> uh, great. Love it. Well done, guys. That was nice. <laughs> Let me close. Close Kohoot. Excellent. Well done. So great. That, guys, brings us to the end of the class for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm just going to show you very, very briefly on the website. There were a couple of changes to the website, but it's kind of back to normal at the moment. If you want the notes from today, right, just go to IELTS Speaking Success. That's this one over here. You can see that, IELTSSpeakingSuccess.com. Um, just go and look, go to the live lessons here, and there you will be able to see, um, not me, take me away, this is where we run the live lessons and you can download the lesson notes here. Just click on download if you want to watch them again, of course. Uh, so you've got all the past um, all the past lessons and notes there that you can just get. Great. That's it. Um, let me just close up. We're going to finish here for today. Thank you very, very much. It's great to see you all here um, and to be back with the live classes. Do join me on Thursday. Uh, what's the topic on Thursday? I always forget. I forgot even what the topic is. I think the topic on Thursday is home. Talking about your home, right? Different rooms, where you live, who you live with. Home is a really interesting topic, right? And a very important one. So that's it for today. Thank you all of you for joining me. If there are any questions, I'll try and pick them up uh, next time. I will have a look and... Uh, Thanks very much. Have a beautiful day. No, have a gorgeous day. I'm going out for a little walk in the sunshine in a moment and then I'm going to have an apple. Great. Enjoy yourselves. Take care, my friends. See you Thursday. Bye bye.